Hey, do you like zero calorie soda? Yeah, I actually have uh, vitamin water, zero vitamin water. I love that stuff. I like it too. You ever have a paycheck though with zero dollars in no. it? No. All right, so that's not so good, right? I can see already. I don't your... even think, can that be called a paycheck? Uh, well, uh, that's a good question. <laughs> a no paycheck. That's called an intern. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> You're going to rub some interns the wrong way with that one. All right, well, I think even with those two examples, we can see sometimes zero is good. Sometimes zero... Not so good. So, Ed, kind of leads us into today's topic of discussion. Zero percent. More specifically, should people aim for a zero percent tax rate in retirement? That sounds fantastic. And I always tell people tax-free is fantastic. You want to have zero percent. But if you do the planning, it may not be the the best course of action because you may be leaving a lot of tax savings on the table if you only... Uh, stop planning or so once you hit zero. All right. So first, before we get into good, bad, and different, how do we get to zero? Like what what would, what are the ways that someone can pay 0% tax in well, retirement, Ed? Assuming they have income, mm-hmm. right? That's what we're assuming. Yes, we'll assume they have income. Yep. it would be zero. If they have zero income, That's they don't have to file a, a return. It is always an easy way to not pay taxes <laughs> to have no income. Yes. Yeah. See, nobody ever comes up with that strategy. <laughs> and you heard it here on the great de- retirement debate. That's right. Have no income. There you go. Done. The zero tax. Bracket. But you could have, you know, they have large uh, standard deductions now. Mm-hmm. Uh, certain income is exempt. So you could actually end up with zero percent. It depends on how you invest and what what level of income you're at you're at yeah so maybe like things like municipal bonds right zero percent taxes uh you have let's say roth iras right right more places you can shield you could have a zero percent tax rate uh could be possibly uh through the use of certain loans from life insurance or even really any asset a loan is is going to be received tax or free. even taxable assets that are covered say by the standard deduction yep yep and then there's ultimately you can have up to that standard deduction amount of income tax free per year plus right. for a lot of retirees if they have minimal to no other income their social security can be tax free as well and even capital gains can be uh, tax free zero percent in right. certain circumstances. That's right. If you're in either the ten or the twelve right, percent right. ordinary income tax bracket, then your long term capital gains rate is zero percent, which applies both to your actual long term capital gains as well as to qualified dividends. But the question is, should you stop there and think this is great? Right. Is it great? If you get to that point where everything is in one of those areas and you are paying a zero percent tax rate, is it good? Generally, no, especially if you have a lot more built up income, say in a retirement account, an IRA, the key to tax planning is getting this money out at the lowest rates. Now, zero is the lowest rate, but there are other low rates that you want to take advantage of every year you can. Yeah, I think you're hitting on something there, Ed, which is, you know, zero percent may be good in theory, like it sounds great, but zero percent for that one year might mean that you either either you or your heirs have to pay a lot more than zero and a lot more than they otherwise would later on, or you might have gotten to zero by prepaying your taxes to a much uh, too high degree, right? You might have prepaid in the form of Roth conversions way too much earlier in life. You might have prepaid in the form of, uh, or even things like municipal bond interest. You know, municipal bonds municipalities know there's a special tax rate associated with their interest. And so a typical municipal bond will pay less in interest than a comparably rated and duration corporate bond. Why? Well, because they know that there's a tax benefit tied cost. to it. That's what you pay. That's right. So to that extent, right, if you're in municipal bonds, you would expect a lower level of interest, and it varies from time to time depending upon what yields are, what market conditions are, but oftentimes, if you're not someone who's in the highest or at least one of the highest tax brackets, you're usually better off taking a bond where you have more gross interest, where it's paying a higher yield, in other words, where you're getting more income. A taxable bond. And then, exactly, a taxable bond, and then paying the income tax on it. Zero percent is great, but, Sometimes it's better to have, you know, a lot of 
a bigger number than it is to have all of a smaller number. Right, and it also depends how much you have stockpiled. Mm -hmm. uh, because if you're only putting a little in at a time, that means the rest of your assets are growing and growing. And if they're in taxable accounts, like an IRA, for example, uh, the taxes are, gonna, are going to explode. Yeah, I mean, so let's talk about why this is even a question to begin with, because uh, I think it's fair. There are, there are some people who really believe that this is the best way to go. Right, where uh, you know either for their own accounts or either even professionals out there who um, who support the idea that retirees should aim towards having a, a zero percent uh, you know tax rate in retirement, and and the thought behind it effectively is. If you have a 0% retirement, you have some predictability over what your taxes look like. It's all yours. Uh, you don't have to worry anymore about, you know, what will this happen? What will that happen? There's a, there's a, a peace of mind. And, and it's fair. Like it, you know. But that's generally you're looking at one year. Mm -hmm. Well, but even, even if you want, right, if you want to get to the extreme, right, how do you get to 0% forever? Well, if you had, you might have a million dollars in your 401k, convert it all today you right, never have to right. worry about taxes That's on true. it in the future, right? You get right. down to 0%. So the, the, the challenge I have, again, with, with that philosophy, um, and, you know, and, and I, I totally agree that we should take into consideration people's uh, comfort levels with things and, you know, what makes them feel good. It's okay. Sometimes it's okay to do things that aren't the best dollars and cents wise if it makes you feel comfortable. But it's also fair to say, that we should be careful about doing things that are blatantly uh, not in our financial best interest. Long just, term. Yeah, long term, exactly. And, and I, to the beneficiaries. Sure, yeah. If that's important to you. Yeah, sometimes people say, well, I'm going to leave my kids Roth money. It'll be the best thing for them. Well, maybe, but maybe they would have been better off getting traditional IRA money plus a lot more money in your bank account because they're in a lower tax rate than you. Right. Right. It, it, ultimately, that zero percent tax rate. The question is, how much did it cost you to get there already or how much would it cost you in the future by not using up today's low rates? I, I guess a, a different way to say this would be a low income tax year is, is a terrible thing to waste from a planning right. perspective. Tell me uh, I've heard it before, but I like when you say it. <laughs> Tell me what you say to a, an accountant who's so proud of themselves. Jeff, I got my clients a zero percent tax rate. How yeah, do you like that? I'm so sorry for the bad right. advice. That's really what <laughs> comes down to. And what do they say? What? what? Yeah. It's, uh, you know, I'm a hero. Uh, unfortunately, and look, you're a CPA, Ed. I I'm know. a CPA. It, 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 it pains, I know, both of us to say that, you know, many of uh, many persons of our ilk, so to speak, are too focused on the here and now. They're looking at today's tax return and saying, how do we keep that number lower when really what the focus should be on is how to keep the total amount of taxes that exactly. someone pays over their lifetime as low as possible, which often means spreading out income. And paying right. at least a little bit, but, you know, some amount, but hopefully a little bit in each year rather than nothing in some, but an outsized tax bill in other years to get it there. The outsized tax bill is the big surprise, and that could be the big hit, and it could be at a higher rate. It will be at a higher rate, even if rates don't go up, because it'll push you into a higher bracket for that one year, because you only get one crack at the apple, rather than you, where you said, you know, you spread it over many years. That's the way to do it. I think we, uh, we, all, I, we all understand what you're saying, Ed, which is, uh, you know, effectively, if you have these opportunities, you, you want a little bit each. Look, I, I'll, I'll give you another analogy, all right. Ed, right? You're supposed to eat 2,000 or 2,500 calories in a day. That's a standard oh, thing, a right? Thing. <laughs> you want it all in one meal or you yeah. want it spread out throughout the day, right? Right. It'd be very difficult to eat all that. You know, well, I thought you were going to go, uh, well, I get it only on Saturday night. You know, <laughs> I'm going to take, you know, I don't know, 20,000 calories on Saturday. Well, there you go. You can take it to an extreme, right? <laughs> yeah. 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 You you need to spread it out. Uh, and ultimately, right, by, um, by, by doing that on the tax return, you know, we have a progressive tax system. That's really why this, this matters. That's the Ed. key. Right. If we had a flat tax system, as is the case in some other areas of the world, and even some states have a flat tax, then it wouldn't matter as much because effectively, whether you took the income today or you took it in the future, you'd be paying the same rate. But in our system, if you have a million dollars of income today, you'll pay more than if you had $100,000 of income each year yeah. over 10 years. Yes, I always tell people the same exact thing. Exactly that, you, you'll always pay less tax the more years you, you spread it out. All right, so conceptually, if we agree that going to a 0% tax rate is, is, is not the best, 
and or it's not the aim that people should be, be, you know, not not what people should be aiming for in retirement. And we're saying that you should try and and spread it out. How, how do you like what what's one or two things that listeners should keep in mind as they're trying to spread out? Like, how do you actually do that in, in, in reality? Well, you have to do a projection. Okay. And this is best done, for example, with Roth conversions. This is best done probably November, December, after you have a good idea of what your income is. The reason I said with Roth conversions, because no longer can you undo a Roth conversion. So I have people, I, I tell people to think about it, uh, but don't pull the trigger on a Roth conversion until maybe the first week in December when you ha- when you know better what it's going to cost after you get your capital gain distributions and all of that, maybe bonuses, things that come in. Mm-hmm. So you're better off uh, doing it at that point, and then you have a better idea what that conversion is going to cost by knowing how much of each lower graduated brackets, that's uh, what you talked about, the pro- progressive tax system, their graduated rates, you get uh, a certain amount of each bracket. You, I think you said it earlier, you never want to waste a bracket. I agree with that because you don't get it back again. If you only use, I don't know, 80% or just a part, forget about the percentage, uh, a part of the 22% bracket or the 24% bracket, you left the rest on the table. You never get credit for that in the future year. Mm -hmm. You want to start using those brackets each year. So the more income you can throw in to max out whatever bracket you feel comfortable with, I think, given these rates, uh, 12%, 22 24%, you could have hundreds of thousands of income, taxable income, yep. uh, and still be in a 24% bracket. Yeah, the way I like to think about it and explain it, and, and it's this is much more at a 10,000-foot view. At a micro right. level, you may have to manage a little bit more specifically. But you, you basically want to look at your entire life. Right. And you want your income to be as flat as possible over all the years. Like if you were to plot this on a chart, right, with with ups and downs, well, some years your your income is higher because you've got a better year in business or some years are higher because interest rates are higher and you've got more interest from the bank or some years are are higher because you had, uh, you know, um, Uh, some bonus or whatnot. Right, sure. Yeah. you want to take the other savings that you have and sort of mix it into those years and and spot low points, if you will, and fill it in so that there are no more low points, so that your income looks as flat as possible over your entire lifetime. Now, obviously, you've got to work at inflation and so, things like that, but that's that's generally the idea. You want your income to be smooth. You don't want large peaks some years and large valleys in the other because when you see that, if you look at a you know if you were to plot your income over the course of your lifetime. Time, any large valley you have and large peak you have is probably an opportunity where had you equalized that income right, more right, over right. those two years or series of years, you would have paid cumulatively less tax. And again, right. this is an oversimplification. Tax rates change over time. There are certain things like Medicare Part B premiums, which only matter after a certain point. And only, you know, if you go over $1, then you're over the cliff. So if you've gone over $1, you might as well go over by 50000 because it can't right, hurt right. you anymore. That's a good but point. as a yeah. general statement, smoothing out income over lifetime helps to create that lowest lifetime tax bill, which as tax planners, we value more than anything else. Right. So back to your zero percent you might get a zero percent but at some point it's going to be the top rate 37 percent or whatever the future top rate is Mm -hmm. and that will uh, wipe away all the prior year's savings yeah so ultimately i think we agree at zero percent sounds nice but the reality is for most individuals who are healthy earners who accumulate significant amount of assets zero percent is not something you should strive for instead focus on that lowest lifetime tax bill use up low rates while you have them and take advantage of today's low tax rate environment while you can. That's right. And inflation, because that expands the brackets each year. Absolutely. All right. That's all the time we have for today. Ed, great discussion as always. We'll see you next time on The Great Retirement Debate.